All right, we are going to switch gears here a little bit, uh, and uh, I'm going to introduce you first to David Arama and Paul Tarasitano. They are with WSC Survival School, Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, um, well, what do you guys do exactly? You teach survival skills? What kinds of survival skills are we talking about? Well, I run a company called WSC Survival School, Inc., uh -huh. and so we, uh, we're consultants and uh, trainers, and we lead uh, a number of different courses in uh, wilderness survival training, uh -huh. map and compass and GPS, and also a lot of youth at risk survival programs. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is pretty interesting because you guys are like, you know, you, get lo you go in the forest just to get lost, right? That's right. And then you try to find your way out. Yep. See, th this right here is an example of, of two real men. They are real. They you, you put me in a forest and... I'll you, find my way out. Nah, I'll be there forever. Like a man. Right. Okay, so survival skills for outdoors. You have a whole bunch of stuff here. Mm -hmm. What do we need to know about surviving outdoors when you really don't have much to go on? Yeah, well, the thing we look at is what the search and rescue and the Ontario Provincial Police recommends, and that is to carry some basic survival essentials, things okay. that'll let you build a fire, make a signal, build a shelter, something for purifying water, uh, some first aid items. So you should always carry some emergency gear with you. Let somebody know where you're going. And remember the rules of three. You can survive maybe three hours if you're hypothermic, three days without water, three weeks without food, uh, maybe yeah. three minutes without oxygen. So understand that and go prepared because you are biodegradable. Mm. Wow, freaky. That's three nice weeks time. without food? Most people can. Uh, depends how much body fat you have on you. I have yeah. plenty of extra on me, so I'd probably survive for quite a while. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Have so, you guys ever been in any any uh, situations? Any any dangerous situations? Yeah, all the time. I've been oh, really? uh, many many uh, dangerous situations, and, uh, and what we're trying to do is prevent that. Yeah. Teach mm -hmm. people what to do so they don't end up becoming lost in the wilderness mm -hmm. uh, and becoming one with nature. So I've had many close calls. Uh, closest calls I think I've ever had to endure was weather related, being yeah. close to being struck by lightning and, and severe storms. We're finding the weather is playing much more of a role more mm. and more now with the global warming. So people have to be much more careful when they're in the wilderness. You know, let For somebody sure. know where they're going and carry good emergency gear and maybe have some wool and fleece clothing just in case they have to spend a night out there. Okay. Yeah. Is, let's talk about starting a fire. This is this is okay. essential. Oh, absolutely. What if you don't have any any of those materials to start a fire? You don't have well, a lighter. Well, if you have a cell phone, actually, you can use your cell phone, and by taking the batteries out and find steel wool. So that is one thing. Just say you can't call nine one one. Obviously, call nine one one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give your location. <laughs> I'm in help. <laughs> exactly. Before, before you start making fires, before you taking your, your battery out. Phone. Exactly. Okay. So. You take your battery out, and uh, if you have fine steel wool, which is essential really in an uh, emergency kit. Bring the steel wool. Yeah, and then what you do is you just put the positive to the negative, and presto. Ooh. Wow. Can you do that yeah. again? I think we missed sure. that. Can All you right. do it up on this couch? Yeah, actually? okay. Come over here. Now, you want to be careful with the battery, because okay. there is a very, very minute chance of just don't catch, catch on my fire. Uh, exactly. stuff on fire. We'll try that again, and we'll just see what happens here. Actually, well, Murphy's Law, but there we go. There go sparks. Oh. Yeah, and we'll put there that out sparks. really quickly. Sparks so, immediately. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And then you get your tinder, anything that will catch a spark that could blow into flame. And uh, you put uh, kindling, logs, and things like that, and you build it up. So okay. that was a very quick way of getting a fire going, Perfect. Uh, just with the cell phone. David, what, what other stuff do we need when we go out into the wilderness? Uh, just a couple of other things too, like a flint stick. This will give you some good sparks, okay? And again, you could spark that into some uh, fine tinder material, like some birch bark. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's a good one. Of course, it helps if you uh, ate some beans the night before and you could get a blue flame <laughs> going. But nonetheless, uh, other things that could be important, uh, maybe a, a headlamp, some type of a lamp to... Uh, I mean, a very common problem people have is they're lost late in the day and they don't have a flashlight or anything, so they can't oh, find yeah. their way. Uh, of course, carrying some kind of a map and a compass. This is really important uh, to have a compass to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, also, I like the mirror here because if I'm out there for a long time, I can see what I look like and yeah. uh, shave or something. Ugh. So these are all important items. Something like a space blanket, which is all a right, solar guys. blanket to wrap yourself in. Hold that thought. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Daytime York Region. David Arama and Paul Tarsitano are here from WSC Survival School. And uh, we just talked about outdoor safety. And now we're switching gears to, to uh, touch on car safety. 
Well, I mean, what would happen if you were trapped in your car or stranded in your car? What would you do? Well, most people panic because they're not prepared, and yeah. they don't have some basic essentials in the trunk of their vehicle. Um, and the vehicle, being mostly metal, means that if you're stuck in a snowstorm, you're going to freeze to death in there in no time at all. Yeah. So what we recommend people strongly think about is to carry some emergency essentials in their trunk, just in case. So okay. something like some wool clothing, wool hat, and maybe some wool pants, wool sweaters, all this kind of stuff, wool socks, fleece is good too, it'll keep you warm just like wool will. Uh, but really most important items of all would be a sleeping bag that's rated to like minus 30 and an under pad. Because if oh. you put the sleeping bag on a seat in the car and try to survive in the car, you'll still freeze. The under pad stops any cold air from the seats and from the car getting into the sleeping bag. These two things are crucial. Like a lot of the, the programs say carry a blanket in your trunk. But a, a blanket, you know, if it's minus 30 and you got a cotton blanket or Not something like that, you're going to still freeze to death. So have some stuff like this, some power bars, some heat packs are really good, hand warmers, candles, all this kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you have there? Also, a window punch is really great to have. Um, just in case you have a rollover and you can't get out your car or you end up in the lake or something like that, you want to get out uh, quickly. So a window punch will break the window. And just that way, one oh yeah, one shot will break the uh, window and you just crawl out that way. And also has a seat belt cutter just in case you're stuck. So these are really essential. You guys oh, have thought of every single angle. Yeah. Uh, is, is that how, how you've always been, even before you, you started this business? Yeah. You, you've just thought of every possible scenario that could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I put myself into many of these situations just to try it out. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of the yeah. programs and safety, they say, oh, carry some candles. You know, you could stay alive in your car. Well, you know, candles are fun, but they'll only heat it up maybe one or two degrees. Really, I mean, don't kid yourself. Have a sleeping bag, mm. under pad, some wool blankets. I mean, really have the good stuff. Because, I mean, when there's a good storm, we've had some good ones this year. People really are stranded and people actually freeze to death. Oh my gosh. What about uh, using your cell phone? Yeah. You said you can use the battery if there is battery left mm -hmm. to make a fire. Um, but how do you charge it? Because you have a really cool device that can actually charge it without. Yeah. Actually, uh, if your cell uh, phone um, dies out, you don't have a, and you're not near your um, car or whatever, mm -hmm. there's a little device right here that you just plug in mm -hmm. and. You turn it, crank. It's a and it crank cranks it. Charger. Yeah, oh, it charges that. it for two minutes of crank, and will give you six minutes of talk time. So you could buy this at uh, Mountain Co-op, uh -huh. okay. and uh, they only go for thirty-five dollars. This is really a great gift for someone traveling yeah. or anybody that travels, for sure. Or That's even amazing. just even just camping. Yeah. You know when it runs out, and you just you need you need to have that battery there going. You know. Very cool. What about, uh, let's also talk about, before we run out of time, uh, ice safety, because the yeah. weather's been a little wonky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, ice is never safe. Yeah. But people are, uh, when you venture out on the ice, there's three things you should carry. Your insurance policy. Mm. And this is your insurance <laughs> policy, is a life vest. Mm -hmm. You go through, you're not going to be able to swim. So this keeps you afloat until you get out, or hopefully someone gets you. Mm -hmm. Another thing are ice picks, because oh. if you fall through, it's going to be very difficult trying to get yourself up and over the ice. So ice picks would help you, give you that advantage right. of kicking and then also pulling up. Another thing would be a throw bag. That's, That's in that. case, that is basically if someone, it's, an, it's a, an extension of your arm. You can actually throw it and about 50 feet of rope and you can help haul somebody out. Very important. Yeah. The ice is, is definitely, I mean, the weather's way more mild now so right. I, people have to be really careful right oh yeah yeah <clears throat> every year people uh, fall through the ice snowmobiling is uh, the highest cause of deaths in, in ontario right now and they go through and you've got to know the ice thickness uh, check with the opp um, and just, you know, if you're not sure, just don't go out. But ma make sure you have flotation, ice picks, and some basic survival gear with you mm -hmm. in case something happens. Because even if you do get to shore, now you're going to have to start a fire, warm up. And you better be wearing woolens because even if they're wet, they're going to still keep you warm and retain their insulative uh, value. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thank you.